This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And gas. It's a, it's a fireplace. <laughs> Mib. Hey, Mib. No matter how hard you try, you'll never be a necessity in our Shifu's investigation. Is that a fact? But no matter how good he is, he is bound to overlook something. If you insult our Shifu, then prepare to be punished! Oh, and how exactly would you punish us? Every investigator under Shifu's command will work to disrupt your investigation! <laughs> Vindictive much? Look at the fireplace, please. Let's talk to Agent Lane first. Fine. You did some investigating over in the Babalese Embassy too, right? He didn't look at him, even. It's I like if you were talking and he's a good were, like, staring the opposite. the opposite way. I did. Is there a problem? Lane Z says, a wolf who aims to hunt for two rabbits at once. I believe the idiom you require is he who runs after two hares will catch neither. Heh! <laughs> a real wolf can catch both! <laughs> I see. So what are you trying to say, seeing as how I am currently handling two cases? Heh! <laughs> Suit yourself! But don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Get that fireplace! There's birds! There's living birds in this room! Oh my gosh, there totally is! Oh, it's Francesca. It's a fireplace. And by the looks of it, I don't think it's been used recently. Yes, I can't say that I see anything unusual about it. Birds. The person shaking hands with the steel samurai in this picture is Ambassador Alba. Wow, he looks very old. He looks very gross. <laughs> That's not nice. I, I'm not... I don't have to be nice currently. The, the guy is, Wait, what, who's, who's 72 the, years Wait, old? Wait, who's the fat guy on the bottom? <laughs> It's the best too. He's a fat oh. Asian guy. Okay. We, well, we never saw his face. That's why I was. Opportunist like... unrelated to the first uh, Damask. I found it all fast. Real name Kashi Nu. Oh, okay then. Um. Larry Buds is twenty five. Tyrell Bad is sixty now. He's still smoking. Bobby Pops. Smoking hot? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. He's seventy two. You know, there's people who'd be like, he's a catch. <laughs> I'm sure. It was taken just moments before the murder. The Steel Samurai must be very popular. They're even using the, using the national treasure as a backdrop. What? I'm looking at the background. Okay. I just don't exactly. What exactly is so great about a top knot there? <laughs> Clearly there's a depth to this show that a young person like you can't fathom. <laughs> Speaking of young people, aren't young children the target audience of this show of costumed actors? Photo of Steel Samurai data type. Oh, now we can see the full photo? If we look at it? Please. If you please. We could see the full photo before. Oh, I guess we could, yeah. Never mind. I was checking to make sure that all the swords were on there. They were. Yeah, they are. The counterpart to the Babalese butterfly is the Alabastian flower. The butterfly and flower. They're both lovely things. But can't we interpret this to mean that Alabast provides honey to Babal? Francesca, can't you come up with a more meaningful or profound comment? Very well, then let's hear what sort of profound comment you can come up with. She's literally about to whip him in the face! M-M-I-B. Yeah. Um, well, flowers cannot survive without the butterflies that spread their pollen, and butterflies cannot live without the nectar that the flowers provide. If either one were to disappear from the equation, neither would survive. How was that, Miss Von Karma? Your explanation took so long that I nearly fell asleep. <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> that would, that's me. Well, let's continue the investigation. Francesca, why can't you just admit I had something there? Oh, I guess we didn't need logic there. Hmm, two gorgeous flowers are in full bloom here. And one of them was plucked. I'm sure flowers as lovely as these must have an equally as lovely name. Miles Edgeworth, are you done staring? I should hardly think passion flowers are all that rare. Passion flowers? That's a rather unusual name. It was named by priests in the 15th century for the Passion of Christ. Wow, Jesus reference. Shoutouts to Jesus. Yeah. Hmm, as they say, you learn something new every day. Passion flowers data. Jotted down the organizer so I can remember their name. <laughs> you get, okay, there's so many things where it's like, you get evidence in this case where you're like, how in the world is that going to be important? And then it is. It's so dumb. This must be Ambassador Alba. Oh. <laughs> this must be Ambassador Alba's desk. His notebook is open on the desk. He must have been in the middle of some important work. Sapling growth log. It finally sprouted today. Funny. It doesn't look like important work to me. Sapling? Is sapling a flower? Or it's is like, it like the a... beginning of a plant. Oh, then someone must have destroyed that because it's gone. 
there was the exact same statue sitting in that Baba Lee's office when we examined it. It's the Primadu statue. It was the national treasure of the Principality of Kodobia. There was only one of these statues, meaning that one of the two is a replica. But both Alabast and Babal claim to have the real thing. What an incredibly childish fight to have. They have the real one, Babal has the fake one. Because they were like, don't touch it. It would be foolish. And, probably and he's also like, that would hurt our tourists. Probably if you touched it, it would like disintegrate. It also would kind of burn. Gold I, doesn't burn. Yeah, gold does not burn. Oh, good thinking, Toad. Thank you. I won't ever rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. <laughs> the counterpart to the Babalese butterflies that- Oh, did we already do- Yeah, we did. They're both lovely veins, but we can interpret this. No, I did <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there we go. wait, is there something on the wall? There's a little pink thing on the wall. Where? See that? It's a little bit That's of That's on dirt. the floor. No, 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 no. That? It's on the wall. It's like pink. There's nothing. There's nothing? Okay. Look at the... Oh, you're looking at the top screen. If you look at the bottom screen, there's nothing there. I can see it on the bottom screen, too. It's not pink, though. Yeah. There's almost the exact same wall mount for the knives on the Bobbly side. But I can't see any of the details from this distance. Check the knives. Oh, wait. Never mind. It's a Primadu statue. There was one of these on the Bobbly side as well. I hear it's very valuable and made of pure gold. It was the national treasure of the ca... ca, ca Kenobia! <laughs> what was Kenobia! Kenobia! <laughs> I'm Francis Kabonkama. <laughs> I've been watching too much Angelina Ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> I have the real Primadu statue, Alice. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. And then like I'm gonna lure you into the river. <laughs> <laughs> Marty and I have discovered Angelina Ballerina, the TV show. Like the main character, Angelina has like a theme for luring people into bodies of water to try to drown them. <laughs> it's very weird. Like two episodes that we've seen. Um, the one with That's Miss, a lot. The one with Miss Lily's supposed lover. Where she tries to drown him, like the mermaids. Literally! Like the she... mermaids in Peter Pan. <laughs> this is really messed up. And then She's the other person. one, she made um, the, the twins. stupid Priscilla and Penelope twins fall into a puddle of mud, which could literally sink their bike. Like, it was very deep. <laughs> which she almost certainly planned ahead of time. Yeah. But anyways. There was only one of these statues. Meaning that one of the two is a replica. But both Alabast and Babal claim to have the real thing and won't budge from their claim. What an incredibly childish fight to have. We've uh, This is all the same dialogue. Uh, we have to deduce something. We'll come back later. We still have to talk to Larry and examine the knives. Larry. There are some weapons on display on this wall. A crossbow, and under that, a set of knives bearing a flower motif. So basically, they did very well in Sheriff of Nottingham. Uh -huh. <laughs> they must be the counterparts to the Bobbley's knives. Which means that the blades include these scabbards. That's the Steel Samurai Spear too, right? Yeah. And they should match the blade that was used to kill Mr. Cochin. Mm, we get to, the, we have to do this again? All of the this takes forever. Why is there a weapon on display in a place like this? I wonder why there's no whips on display here. <laughs> That's it? Okay. It's the Steel Samurai's primary weapon, the Samurai Spear. Isn't it awesome? I totally fell for this thing. It's sleek and shiny, just like my heart. It comes at you like whoosh! When you hold it, you just want to live life like BAM! You do well to watch what you say, Larry. Although it is just as Larry says, the spear is quite the symbol of valor. How the heck were these three friends? It's like, we've got two lawyers and a bum. <laughs> and they're all friends. And Phoenix eventually became a bum. <laughs> the bum one. However, <laughs> speaking of spears, aren't you supposed to use them by thrusting the points straight into your opponent? I'm not entirely convinced this spear is up to the task. What's wrong, Edgy? You're just staring off into the distance. Oh, I get it. Tell you what. Tell you what. I'll let the studio to make you one, okay? But this one's mine. I, did I say anything about wanting one? <laughs> Maybe I can shut him up if I show him the piece of evidence that will point something out about this spear. It's bent? No, it's not bent. Knives adorned with flowers are on display here. I suspect that these are the counterparts to the Babalese knives. The blades of these knives should match the blade on the knife that killed Mr. Cochin. What? One of the knives is missing its blade. Let's see if the two pieces and uh, the blade in the handle fit each other. It would appear that they fit together quite well, almost seamlessly. Then this means that an alabastian knife did find its way into Babal. But how? 
someone tells Larry, hey, can you take this and go on to the other side? So he climbs up through the chimney, out the chimney, walks to the other side of the building, and then drops it off. Chimney, Larry? <laughs> I can. No, just no. <laughs> I can spot absolutely no difference between this primitive statue and the balls. The statue's face looks a bit like that of the costume hero you like so very much. I only wonder why you Americans have such an affinity for that kind of face. The statue wasn't made by an American, you know. At least I don't suppose so. Yeah, like France. France made our Statue of Liberty. Yeah, it was great. Thanks, France. Thanks, France. Did you ever read that book about the guy who made the pinky finger? No. The kid who made the pinky finger of the... Oh, that was a really good book. There are decorative plants Ahem. here as well. There are decorative plants here as well. This room is overflowing with nature. There are decorative plants here as well. <laughs> Humans used to live in the grandeur of nature once long ago. I believe I'm not mistaken in thinking that those people truly love nature. Hm. This is coming from a man who loves shows featuring costumed actors. Ah! She just had to go there again, didn't what she? What kind of shows does Francisca watch? She has to watch something. She's like, I don't care. She only watches stuff on the airplane. So it's just like random documentaries about making strawberries. She's like, I love this. It's so good. This is great. What a tearjerker. She watches Chopped. I could see her watching. She would Chopped. watch Chopped. Chopped is great. She, or no, she would watch like Toddlers and Tiaras. Oh no! Why does that show exist? I don't. She would watch something that she would be able to be mad at. Nineteen Kids and Counting. <laughs> they <laughs> have too she... many children. <laughs> no, she would watch something that like she could whip around. Like you know what I mean? Like she with... watches TV to relax, probably. No, Francisca doesn't relax. There was a grandfather clock just like this one earlier in the Babalese episode. The only time she relaxes is when she's driving her John Deere. Tractor out, out in the sunset. In the <laughs> you know, symmetry is a fine thing, but their interior design really suffers for it. Really? I think this clock actually fits the decor of the room quite well. I suppose the wood does suit the all-natural atmosphere of this room. Its design and the material it's made of strikes a good balance with the plants. Hey! You two, now is not the time to be talking about interior decorating, you know? Hurry up and save me! Be quiet! Ah! As she faces the wrong direction. <laughs> This is all a part of my elite investigation. All you need to do is to be quiet and watch. Actually, I do believe Larry has a point for once. Larry, there are a few things I need to ask you about. Hey, how about that? I've got a few things I've got to ask you too. What is it? It's like, both you and him. How is it that the two of you always manage to have some cute or hot girl by your side? <laughs> and Francie, what about that promise you made to me? Promise? What promise? The one where you said you would model for my next book, Francie's Whippity Whip Trip! <laughs> yeah! I made no such promise! Ever since grade school, we've had a certain saying about Larry. When something smells, it's usually the butts. One needs to look no further than this man to find the king of troublemakers. Yeah. He's not wrong, though. There's always a cute chick next to one it's of them. It's true. As I recall, aren't you calling yourself Larry Stoneham now? That's Donum! Maurice Stoneham! Get that straight in your head, Edgy! Yo, oh, oh, oh. Now I remember. You're that rude, pale imitation of a real artist. No, no, no! You've got it all wrong! I gave up on that horrid Maurice business. Besides, when Benjolina left me in my heart in peace. <laughs> it's perfect! It's Banjo's girlfriend from Banjo Kazooie. Is it? Banjolina. No, oh, I was I thinking don't of Angelina Ballerina. Banjolina so. Allery. <laughs> That's the- When Angelina left me in my heart in pieces, that's when Mindy walked into my life. She's been so good to me that I wanted to help her in some way. And I figured I could go through the Steel Samurai outfit. Oh, I bet Mindy is the pink princess. Oh, I want to meet her. That'd be cool. Your name blathering makes me less and- makes less and less sense each time we meet. I believe he's saying that he picked up this part-time job as the Steel Samurai so that he may attempt to capture the heart of the actress who plays the Pink Princess. You got it! I knew you'd know what I mean, Edgy! Not really. It's not so much as I understood, but a simple deduction based on your usual modus operandi, Larry. Larry, I'd like you to confess right now to everything you did tonight. C confess Hey! Don't tell me you suspect me too! 
Nonsense. I don't believe you have the mental acuity needed to plan and execute a murder. <laughs> However, we are talking about you here, so I find it hard to believe that nothing happened. Yeah, you had your headphones on when the gunshot went off. He <laughs> like, proceeded let, to a real boom and laugh. He let What's-His-Face die in that one... Um, oh yeah, he told he me what his straight up died. died. <laughs> <laughs> For past experience has taught me that you are always at the center of some insane event. Angie, how can you be so mean stabbing you if you mean your words like that? Unfortunately, I don't have the time to search out a key to unlock your heart this time. So I suggest that you just cooperate and tell me what you know. Okay, okay, I get it. Just stop Francie from whipping me from behind. So, I guess you know what I did, right, Edgy? I can't even begin to imagine, however, I imagine that whatever you were up to is probably beyond my imagination. So you will tell me what exactly you did, Larry. Nope, not yet, Edgy. I'll take more than that to loosen my lips. <laughs> I want more! Confess. Now. <laughs> okay, well, I was up on the roof. And why exactly were you up there? Oh, you know, that wintry custom with the legendary hero? Legendary. Hero. Santa Claus! Santa. Claus. I wanted to do that thing he does, so I climbed up to one of the chimneys. But when I got there, there was smoke pouring out of the chimney. There was smoke pouring out of the chimney. He's He went down the chimney and his costume got caught on fire. And then he just touched everything in existence. Oh my gosh, Larry! Larry! Larry. <laughs> and... Well, I couldn't go down the chimney with smoke coming up, right? So I gave up. Larry, you do realize that Santa Claus does not exist, right? Of course I know! I did graduate from junior high, you know! Then you should also understand this. If Santa was real, he would be the biggest unlawful trespasser in history. Oh crud! Is this your attempt to imitate Santa Claus that has landed you as the prime suspect in his murder? Come on, man! What's so wrong with pretending to be Santa? Let's start with the fact that it will be the I Ides of March in a matter of hours. Santa only visits homes on December 24th. That's in December, you nitwit. No! Wait, wait a sec. We're not in court. That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Larry, about the samurai sword that was used as the murder weapon. Oh, that. Well, I shook hands with the ambassador in this room, you know. Yes, apparently you did. And well, I totally forgot about it and left it behind when I left afterwards. You want to talk about shock? I was the most shocked of all when I heard it had killed someone. Shock! Foolish fool looking especially foolish for a foolishly stating such a foolish act of excuse. You forgot to take something that big with you? Why, who would believe such a tale? Sorry, Miss Vankara, but I believe him. Because if anyone could forget something like that, it would be Larry. Edgy, you believe me? I just knew that our friendship was something special. Anyway, if even if Larry had simply forgotten the sword and left it behind, that in no way clears his name. Which means that I will have to prove his innocence from a different angle. Present that. Hey, that's an official deal samurai weapon! Huh? What? You want me to do it? Oh, you have no idea how many fans asked that of me! What are you prattling on about now? Steel Samurai Sushi Slice! How was that? I bet it sent shivers up your spine. Nah! I let myself get caught up in being a spectator! How could I have failed myself? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um... Mm. Oh hey! It's the Steel Samurai! I want you to answer this for me for me, Larry, and depending on my the answer, I may let you live. The Steel Samurai that was up there on that stage, was that really you? Yup! Sure was! L Larry, you <laughs> steal samurai sushi slice. <laughs> Edgeworth's mind didn't. Lie. I was moved by the performance of this man, this completely useless, worthless bum. I fear I may never recover from this. That's so funny. <laughs> All right. I won't rest until we look at the plant. Oh, or not. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Well, yeah, it's not bent. It's bent <laughs> compared to the autograph. The condition of hair is related to this piece. Wait, but I'm right! I don't see how it's related in any way. Gah! Francisca, this is not like you at all. Don't tell me that you don't understand the meaning behind this piece of evidence. Well, I don't. I suppose I have no choice then. I'll just have to explain it to you from the beginning. But you 
should be doing from the very beginning is admitting your mistake. She saw right through me. That sounded like Bowser. Mario, how dare you interrupt my family vacation? Maybe we should present it to him. Wait, we don't have the spear. It's, I don't think we examined the spear. Yeah, no, we, yeah we, we, did. Did. we did. Um. Uh, oh great, now we're at the part of the game that's hard. Okay, let's just try it. What is that plant supposed to be? Francisca, can't you see that it's supposed to be a likeness of Ambassador Alba? <laughs> <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, as a subordinate, you have a lot of nerve telling me what to think. I look forward to your next salary assessment next month. You are deluding yourself if you think you have any control over that. She's just copying him. Deduce. But I found that this was the problem. Maybe I just didn't have it on the proper cursor. Oh, are you kidding? I just didn't have the cursor on the right part yeah, of the you spear. Didn't. Larry, about the spear. Oh, are you feeling it? Bam! I thought there was something strange about this spear. Tell me, Larry, is it just me or is the spear a bit bent? What? No way! It's exactly as it should be, yo! I have here the autograph you wrote for me earlier. Now take a look at this, what you drew with your own hands. You can see that the spear is clearly of a different shape. <laughs> what do you, do you have to say to that? I'm sorry! When I hold the spear in my hands, all of a sudden I feel super powerful! And then, during practice, I was spinning it around and around, and bam! It hit the wall! I actually can really do that. You unbelievable! This is an embassy! But I've always been like that, ever since I was a kid. One time on an over field, overnight field trip, I brought a fake sword and I played with it late that night. I was just a useless hot point in bed! Larry, clarify that for me, will you? Okay, so it was some field trip and I began to shadow fight with myself. Not <laughs> that! I meant about what you said earlier about spinning the spear and hitting the wall. Oh, that! It's no biggie. It's not like I left a hole or anything. That's not why I'm asking, Larry. The samurai spear is made of metal. I somehow doubt that a move as simple as spinning it around would cause it to he, bend. He hit the statue with it, didn't he? Man, Edgy, you're so naive. W what? Where did that come from? Well, you keep coming at the samurai spear, but it's not real. You can't actually fight someone with it. Because it's hollow on the inside. You could hit it against practically anything and it would bend. I is that so? Don't tell me you thought it was real! Oh, but don't take that the wrong way. I just think if it's part of your personality is cute. I see. Your friendship truly is something special, Miles Edgeworth. Nah! That's not friendship! It's utter humiliation! <laughs> and we get the samurai spear. Cool. Should get all this? Yeah, okay. Cool. I never checked this area, but it never hurts to check. Oh, wait, I said that wrong. Alright, we gotta do something here. Um, what looks destroyed? Look at the photo. The photo, there's. Well, it looks different, I believe. Yeah. Okay, I don't know Look why. at this photo and tell me what you find odd about the scene, Miss Von Karma. The apparent joy on the ambassador's face as he shakes the top knot's hand. He doesn't look joyful, he's just like... Hmm. That's not it, I was trying to point out that the statue in the photo is facing a different way. You're right. The statue is a national treasure. As such, only an ambassador or a secretariat level person is allowed to handle it. The fact that the statue is facing one way in this photo, and now it's facing a different direction in this preserved crime scene, is proof that someone touched the statue around the time of the crime. Indeed. Good job. Please investigation complete. Hmm. I guess that about wraps up my investigation. Hmm. That's... It's Mindy! Yo, Pink Princess! How are you feeling? Still feeling ill? She better have the best valley girl voice in history. And yet another strange character comes out of the woodwork. And so the Pink Princess also comes to pay the Alabastian Embassy a visit. I believe I may need to speak with her as well. Miss Pink Princess, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. Miss Pink Princess, if you would please answer. Oh my! <laughs> This must be what they call fate! How could this happen two days in a row?! <laughs> <laughs> what the? Are you Miss Oldbag? Why are you surprised? Ha! 
So you're the one who got to play the Steel Samurai. It's too bad I didn't realize that until now. You are acquaintances with Larry? Why, yes, we worked at the same company for a little while, you know. She also worked at KG Security, or KB Security. And she was in the credits. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, but <laughs> does this mean Larry didn't ever see her without her mask on? She's like, Man, maybe. What a hot girl. Maybe. You idiot. That's why it's okay, my edgy poo. You don't need to be jealous. <laughs> no! I was in the next room, you know, trying to get into some beauty sleep. Has Miss Von Karma met her? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, but it was so noisy here that I couldn't fall asleep, so I came over to complain. So imagine my shock when I saw my precious Edgy Poo waiting here for me. I mean, who would have imagined that you would ever come to a show like this? I guess I've misjudged you, Edgy Poo. You misjudged him. I thought he was trying to avoid me, you know. That was no misjudgment on your part! That's precisely what I was trying to do! <laughs> Oh, but it looks like the winds have shifted now he's willing to be chased after. I'm simply overwhelmed. Don't you worry, Edgy Poo. I chase you forever to the edge of the earth. Isn't that just peachy? This is one of those rare times when Franziska and I actually see eye to eye. Ugh, your freaking face. Why is she in every <laughs> game? She, this is the second time she's appeared in this game. <laughs> oh, now then, <clears throat> what are you doing here? I thought you were working at Gatewaterland as the Pink Badger. What are you talking about? That was ages ago! That was yesterday! <laughs> Look, I worked at Global Studios before a long time ago, right? Well, they called me up this morning, kind of out of the blue, actually. They called you? Apparently the girl who plays the Pink Princess collapsed from a bad oh, cold. Oh, okay, so maybe he was actually dating me. Okay. <laughs> it happened so suddenly, so they called me in to be her last minute replacement. Do they not have enough people on staff at that studio? I really couldn't say no, so here I am playing the role of the heroine. Instead of that mini Mindy girl, I mean. But the poor girl, I feel bad for her. Because they let me stand in for her, she's going to have a terrible time when she returns. I mean, I'm not exactly great, but oh man, I was standing at the last second, I tripped over the poor bras, I threw the rag doll the shirk, and the audience was an opera, but oh my god, I'm just a bunch of simpletons. <laughs> You're a bunch of simpletons. <laughs> <laughs> You're rather lively, old lady. S so basically, you received the stand-in request this morning, correct? Uh, you got it. If you need to see it, I've got it right here. Look. It appears that she is telling the truth. Stand-in request data got it in the court organizer. They needed an understudy. Also, does that mean the show that Edgeworth saw tonight involved her, like, throwing the rag doll in the ice? It's like, man, this actor sucks. <laughs> okay, also, you didn't mind doing In the very first episode of this case, there are the two girls like, oh, it's talking really fast. They're like, look at the pink princess fell I heard her hip crack. <laughs> like, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> so many people are me. <laughs> I will tell you my fine act to move the entire audience to tears. Yes, tears of laughter, as I recall. But being famous has its problems, too, you know. Here, take a look at this. It's a letter from a stalker! I was just taking my break when I found this stuck under my door to my room. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight. You're <laughs> loving night. <laughs> but it's spelled wrong. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kinds of things. Look at what it says! Wendy. Oh, Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> I'll be descending on you from a love bomb today. You're loving for a <laughs> How absolutely revolting. I mean, you think you could get my name right. There's no accent to my name. Wait, this horrible handwriting. Where have I seen this before? Oh, but now that you're here, Edgy Poo, I feel 100% safe. Eh? Uh, I... Where do I factor into this? You must bust that evil stalker man for my sake, won't you, Edgy Poo? Well, if you allow me the liberty to handle this in my own way, I'll gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. Oh, come on, Edgy Poo! Stop being so dismissive and play it hard to get! Oh, God. Letter from a stalker added to the organizer. You were so... What were you doing at the time of the crime? What crime? What? After that show was over, I've had nothing but free time on my hands. So I used the fireplace in my room next door to keep my bad hip warm. Freaking Larry wanted to go down there and see her. Well, a murder occurred in the room right next to yours. Is that right? Oh, Edgy Poo, I'm so scared. Hold me, caress me. Uh, if you would please not clean onto my personage. In any case, I take it then that you failed to show up at the Ambassador Alba's speech. 
Oh, that! No, I didn't go. I mean, I may have the heart of a young, tender maiden, but my body just refuses to cooperate at times. As soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. I couldn't move at all. Can you provide proof of your condition? Oh, you just go on ahead and access the doctors in the infirmary. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to the San Basin. <laughs> I have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave the room is rather pleasant. She came, though. Prosecutor Von Karma, I brought the police dog at your requested, sir! <laughs> Heck yes! Good work. You may leave now, officer. Leave the dog with me. Hmm, this dog? I requested the assistance of a dog in our search for Yadagarasu. Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country, too. Is that Missile? It's Missile! Hey, you're a real cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy! That's the police dog Gumshoe's been taken care of. I think its name is Missile. Missile! I forgot Missile is in this case, actually. What a fitting name for a police dog that dashes out in front and attacks. That action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve the case for us, you know. Now, Missile, I want you to find some clues. Go! Aww. I love the animation! <laughs> it's so cute! Oh! Good dog! You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a certain someone I know. Now, what do we have here? What is this? <laughs> Looks like a small hot dog, but... Hmm? Wait, Francesca, isn't that an official samurai dog? <laughs> oh, no! Bad missile! He ate it. I wonder if it's alright for him to eat that. It's just a meat substance snack featuring the steel samurai. I'm sure he'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you've gathered there in a single quick glance. We should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog in the first place. Hmm, looks like that snack wasn't all missile found. Oh, what do we have here? It appears to be a lady's undershirt. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing? I somehow doubt that. It doesn't look like the shirt would even fit him. A samurai dog in a lady's undershirt. What are these two items doing in a room like this? Given the circumstances, the lady's undershirt could only belong to one person. I suppose I should get this over with and ask the owner about the under said undershirt. No. No. We're, We're stopping. Done. We're done. No, we can't take any more. Goodbye, Let's everyone. Tune in next time. That's gold bag butter. Why? Why? Anyways, until next time, have a great day and God bless.